Okay, it's really good to meet you. I think we met before very mm -hmm. briefly in Berlin yes. uh, at, a, at another conference. Uh, I'm here with Mandy uh, Chesel from IBM. Yes. You're a distinguished engineer. I um, indeed, yes. So what I wanted to talk about is the importance of data for machine learning, mm -hmm. especially the role of metadata. Um, okay. This is something we, I, I think, sometimes overlook, mm -hmm. um, in, especially when you look at data from a business perspective. So yes. wh why do we need to worry about metadata when yeah. it comes to using data and using it especially for AI and machine mm -hmm. learning? Okay, so um, most data is just zeros and ones and you look at it and you've got this series of numbers. What on earth is that set of numbers? Is it a date of birth? Is it the profit? If it is profit, is it before or after tax? All of that information is actually metadata. Yeah. Um, and when you view that data through an application, the application has all that knowledge encoded in the, in the code around the application. Yeah. But when we do machine learning, we take that logic away and the data is just back to the zeros and ones. Mm. So we capture all of that understanding of the data in something called metadata. And we need, once we move that data around and wherever we use it, we need that metadata to be available to the people who are making decisions about the data, um, the tools that are using it and, and, and manipulating it, so that we don't take this date and turn it into profit. Mm. Yeah, I guess the challenge, especially with machine learning, is you're trying to bring data together from different places. data sources, different mm -hmm. places, different applications to now make it work. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they all come with slightly different. Yes. So there's different. Yeah. I mean, you've got different precision. When was the data last updated? Um, so you might have someone's age, um, but if this age value in this database hasn't been updated for three years, it's not correct. Mm. Whereas the age from this database um, is that maybe it's updated daily, maybe it's updated monthly. Mm. So you really do need. It's not as I say. It's not enough to know. It's a, it's an, it's the age. We just need to understand what processing, what assumptions we mm. made. So it's it's all about precision and quality, value, what it means, how it was updated, how people interpreted that data. So otherwise, we're going to be matching things that are, are very different, and the answers are going to be wrong. Very good. So metadata is something important. It's very important. How how do organisations address this this big challenge? Because <coughs> I guess simply just pouring all of their data into a data lake. Mm -hmm. There, you, I think you used a great example earlier. You said it's like having a, a tortoise without a, a protective shell. shell. Yeah, yes. So right. so you you you've now got all your tortoises in your data <laughs> lake without their shells. Exactly. What, exactly. How can you address that? Um, what, so there are organizations who choose not to address it and what happens is each data scientist because they can't quite trust what was there before and you know I'm not sure when that was last updated they go and get their own copy of the data mm -hmm. and they work with that and then they do their project and when that's finished they leave it and then they go and get it again so what you see is a fast increase in continuous increase in the data in the data lake and that data represents a risk and a liability to the organization mm. because it might be financial, it might have personal information in it, and nobody knows. And, and it's just sitting there mm. acting as a, as, a, as a risk. There are other organizations that say, okay, um, we're going to catalog everything, but we're only going to use these tools. We can only use these tools because we want one catalog. And one catalog works fine for a single data lake. But when you start to want to use that data beyond the data lake, it, you want to take, you want to have real-time processing around it. And some companies have multiple clouds nowadays. Exactly, and, yeah. exactly. So the single repository starts to break down um, with uh, a, a, as you start to think more as an enterprise and how you want to use data more effectively. Mm. Um, and that's where um, we start to sort of think about how can we exchange and have the metadata repositories working together um, to provide a single service to the organisation without limiting it to a single vendor's metadata repository, a single instance of the metadata itself. Very good. And mm -hmm. I, IBM has just launched a product to help with this. Do you I, want to... Well, it's, it's, actually, um, it's actually an open source project. Yeah. Uh, so that means that we write the code and it's freely available for anybody to use. Um, and then we take that code and we embed it in our products. And then we work with other vendors to embed the same code in their products 
so that they now speak the same language nice. and so those products can start exchanging and because it's open and freely available to everybody it's not controlled by any particular organization yeah. it evolves because um, different companies work together to come up with the best solution so we have a very high quality capability that is being used by different vendors and uh, um, and the result is actually um, a very um, a very valuable piece of software as a result. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mandy, for your time. You're welcome. Great, thank, thank you. you. Lovely to talk to you.